Good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Schifrin, and I'm calling the um, Monday, April 3rd, 2023 Planning Board meeting to order at 6.37 p.m. I'd like a roll call vote, please. Carol Hawks is present. Uh, Michael Vaughn. Mike Barrasco present. present. I'd like to have a recital of the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank all of our service people who are serving now and who have served in the past. Ian can't be with us this evening. Um, Chairman's addition solution to agenda number 48 hours before. I don't have anything right. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing this evening. Um, review volunteer response form. Any? Okay. Um, just so that everyone does know, we have an election coming up on April 24th. And um, Andrew Shepard has taken out papers and he will be on the ballot. We actually welcome his participation. And there is still another vacancy um, on the planning board that is on the ballot to vote on on the 24th. If anyone has any interests or questions, please call Beth at the town hall or you can call myself. Um, reviewing a 1.5 review and approve minutes of March 27th. Carol? Oh, I'm sorry. Any oh, I don't have any. I read the room on the with the minute. Okay, making motion. I'll make a motion to approve the minute for March 27th. Is there a second? Second. Second. I'll second that, Lori. <laughs> Mike, are you on for the roll call vote for the minutes? Oh, yeah, sorry. You, uh, we lost volume there for a second. Mike Roscoe, yes. Okay. Thank you. And Laura Schiffen, yes. Thank you. Okay, so we have a few minutes before our continued hearing. Um, okay, um, nothing under three. Um, are there any updates at, on 4.1, the stormwater management projects? Do you have an update any? And any yep. we have um we received one monthly inspection report um from um uh, Campbell Farm yep. MSRPD. So that went into the folder. Okay. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Um and we also issued a second letter for 27 scale rain. Um still working to get a filing for their stormwater permit that expired in 2021. Uh, so that went out today, and that's also in your folders. Mm -hmm. And what we do, uh, we're just working with the uh, committee to find out where they're at in the construction process. And if they're done, then um, they have the option of just filing for that certificate of completion versus the filing of only new application. So, okay. okay. Um, notice from other towns. Yeah, or Jonathan or other town. Just covering with those. Four point two people came in. Let me see. Get those. Okay. Like the last meeting. One came in from Grafton, and it's a notice of decision for a special permit and a site plan review. 
for a marijuana retail, retail establishment at 1 Ford Village Road. And that was approved? It, it is the permit? It's been granted. Mm -hmm. Um, you say a term was lost when marijuana became legal and told them that at the time I said we should quit our jobs and open up a cannabis shop for the bigger person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want it before, that's it was. It would be interesting to, um, could, could you pass along that to Townsend? What the, um, can you get the decision? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how they issue that permit because yeah. in case we should ever get it, the Board of Selectmen might have something that they can. Review. Okay, I'll get a copy of that decision for like size two anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, the second is from the town of Shirley, just came in today. Um, it's a legal notice for a public hearing. Um, it will be at 7 p.m. on Monday, May 1st in Town Hall. It is for a variance for section 3.5.2 A1 and section A4. Uh, the protected zoning bylaws relating to minimum lot area, uh, single family, 15,000 square feet, and a section four other uses of 10,000 square feet for a total of 25,000 square feet needed. <laughs> Very confusing. <laughs> no, yeah, so what, what is I'm not even following it. Say Shirley? Shirley. <laughs> yeah, the town of Shirley. It was a ZBA. Um, so it sounds like a rezoning. Yeah. Well, it's very confusing how it's written, but okay. I think it's a public hearing. <laughs> we can safely say that. Okay. <laughs> and when is that? That is May 1st uh, at 7 p.m. In, uh, in Town Hall in Shirley. Okay. So I heard something um, interesting about because we're going to be discussing the uh, cluster zone that the Housing Authority wants us to chime in. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> At um, our meeting on the 10th. Okay. And I was wondering if you could get the Lunenburg bylaws because I happen to be talking to some people Sunday, I think it was. And they were saying that with another realtor, they were saying now in Lunenburg, they, um, they have a minimum of 100 feet of frontage and a minimum one acre lot. Which is what it used to be in Townsend before they upped it to stop development. Okay, when it went to 200 and, and two acres and then three acres and other certain areas. Okay. So when we discuss that, um, if we could look at what Lunenburg has. Okay. And, and those are actually, well, I don't know if that's different. Um, if because certain areas of Lunenburg are on public sewer, so that people can tie in to that. Um, it is it just for parcels that are on public sewer? They're they're cluster zoning. No, they're um, say somebody had a three acre lot, and it was Lunenburg. Well, now the zoning has changed, and if they have if they have um, 250 or 300 feet of road frontage and they have, a, they are able to cut out two lots, say one with 100 feet and, a, and one with an acre off that parcel, um, is that only allowed where there's public sewer, like a tie-in, or is that just what their ruling is now or their zoning? So. Um... I'm not aware of any recent zoning changes that have occurred in Lunenburg relative to the dimensional stand. They do have a cluster zoning bylaw that they adopted a few years back that provides for uh, reduced acreage. I want to say it's 30,000 square feet in the residence A district and maybe like 60,000 in the outlying district, um, the more rural districts. Um, but to answer your question directly, there's no linkage or connection between sewer Availability okay. and that's just a district. Okay, it just so happens that in some of those districts, it just so happens that in some of those districts, with the lesser dimensional requirements, the, the more urban or the more the, the denser locations, yeah. um, that they have to be the same locations that have sewer availability, and that's where it's super All located. Right. Some of the more off the beaten path locations tend to be. 
than the LY district, which is their more rural district. They're their less tax district. Okay. I think that Lunenburg may have been one of the towns that Courtney investigated um, for the housing authority when they came up with this, um, their changes. Okay. okay. So I'll, I will get that code, that section of code from uh, Lunenburg and, and uh, get that to you guys. Yeah, because this this um, realtor was talking about how um, you know, you could go to the town hall and they'd say, no, you can't do it. But in actuality, per their bylaws, you can do it. And it's a by right. Mm -hmm. Their bylaws are available. Okay, yeah. No, Lindenburg's great. <laughs> they just redid their code uh, not too long ago. So it's, well, it's quite up to date. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, we are just at 645. So I would like to continue the public hearing for 22 Main Street site plan, site plan review special permit application. Applicant Sally server proposal is for alterations to structure driveway configuration in addition of parking spaces at 22 Main Street, now 41, block six, lot zero zoned out OCD, which is Outlying commercial district uh, to operate a veterinary hospital. Um, I'd like a roll call vote, please. Aaron Hoffman, present. Robert Terry, present. Michael Mike Rosso, present. And Laura Schiffman, present. Okay. Um, Dan. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. And, <coughs> and is also here this evening with us. Um, so uh, you gave us a revised full set of plans. Correct. And we do have that in front of us. Um, is it just one copy here? Or can I, there's, there should be two there. Oh. Um, and I can screen share as soon as I get into the meeting with Michael. Okay. Okay. Um, who who would like uh, who would like to screen share? Yeah, I can screen share. Thanks. Beth. Yes, okay. Stand by. Okay. okay, Beth. You may now screen share. Thank you. I think Beth, if you put up sheet 1.0, is probably the best. Shows pretty much everything that's going on. Did you say C one zero? Yes, C one point zero. Okay, thank you. That one up a little further. There we go. Okay. Yep. Let me know when you're ready, Lori. Sorry, is this what I'm going to be following tonight? Are we supposed to do all of these? There are further bylaws that need to be reviewed for the project. Oh, okay, of what is, okay, what we have and how we act upon what we have. Yeah, right? So findings of fact, that's going to be where you write your findings of fact. Okay, for each zoning bylaw. Okay. Um, okay, Stan, do you want to go over what your differences are? Sure. Last time, um, all the referral comments had come from the different town departments based on the previous site plan that Dr. Thurber had submitted. And that was basically a uh, kind of a paper bag sketch, if you will. So, We've gone and uh, Beth solicited 
new referrals from all the town departments. We had two basic comments that we've addressed. Um, the highway superintendent queried Mass Highway, and they would they're going to require us to get a uh, a Mass DOT access permit, which has been filed for, and I believe it was uh, the uh, the the ZBA that asked uh that suggested that we have a sidewalk and we've added a sidewalk which will connect that will connect mcdonald's with patriot pizza across this site we have on the on the plan we have we have a landscaping schedule on the plan we have our parking requirements and we have some general notes and notes relative to the disturbance area beth and i went uh beth asked me to provide documentation relative to needing a stormwater permit. I submitted a letter to her taking the requirements in section, whatever the stormwater section is, it's 17538, the applicability. And I outlined I on all those different sections, we don't, we don't trigger any of those thresholds. We are mitigating the runoff on the site to a detention basin that's at the rear of the site, which is, uh, doesn't, change the grade by uh, only three feet and the requirements four feet for that there are no grades steeper than relatively flat on the whole site so there's no grades over 15 percent and our disturbance area is a little over 15,000 square feet and accounting for the top and subsoil that they'll have to remove some of which will stay on site where we're only at about 900 yards cubic yards of material that will be that will be, it won't be removed, but will be moved on site. So I think we have addressed all of the comments from all the town departments, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Um, I see the uh, retention area. I don't see any catch basins, so I'm assuming and I don't see any topography. If you go to, if, um, Beth, if you go to sheet, um, go to sheet 2.0, it'll show the topography. It, yeah. it's all, it's, there's no drain, it's all sheet flow. It all slopes towards, towards that base and the grading and the pavement all slope towards that base. I see. Okay, just that. That's what that's what you just, I don't think it's going to trigger right? So the grade generally goes to the lower left, right? Boy, I Correct. See that. Yeah. Correct. As okay. it does now. That's the way the, the exit, the lot slopes in that direction now. So we're not, we're not changing that in, to any significance. And we're trying to use low impact development techniques here with avoiding structures and curving and, and the like. Um. I'm not an, an engineer. I just had like a question earlier about the dumpster. Yeah. And the question about it was going to be picked up after dark because the trucks wouldn't be able to make the turn if the parking spaces were used. No, that's that's actually not 100% accurate, but we're willing to accept the fact that they would empty the dumpster after hours. The, the tight the site is so tight that a trash truck they would have to come in on the on the west side of the building or as you're looking at it from the as you're looking at the plan on the left side and they'd have to come part way around around the building and then back up to, to empty the dumpster and then they'd have to pull out on the left side of the building so if there was a car pulling in and they were pulling out there would be a conflict there but in reality, it's Dr. Thurber and her assistant and maybe one or two people that are in there, but we we just specify that they that, that should be emptied after hours. So there won't be any any conflicts. Okay, well, I don't know. Maybe it's because work is being done on the property, but there have been more than five or six cars there. There is a lot of work going on there right now. Yeah. Um so looking at, at the map, 
So in other words, when the truck comes in, it has to go out the same way. It can't do the full circle. Correct. Is that there's not enough room for the truck to make to make that swing around the building, and there's just there's just no more room on the on the lot. So they'll come in and out the same way. Okay. So that's another reason why you have to do it after hours. Right. I think it'll avoid it'll avoid any kind of any it'll avoid any issues. Okay. Any other uh, questions from board member? Yeah, can you just, um, the driveway with, what is that, 14 feet or? Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, Lori. Okay. Um, yes, Mike? Um, did the fire department make any comment about fire trucks or ambulances for access in their comments? No. no. I'd like me to read all the yes. mandatory um, And they, they're in from the last meeting, right? Everything is in, yeah. There's about Everything is seven in. comments, eight comments. Okay, and that has not been read into the record yet. Okay. But Stan has... Not all of them. Okay. Most of them. I thought they did a, a okay. no comment on it. Fire all right. department? Yeah. Fire department had no comment. Yes, that's correct. Right. Oh, that, that, that's that's correct. Thanks. I was, I was just curious. I, I just didn't hear. Okay. Um, and in reality, I mean, from a practical standpoint, if there's a fire at that building, that that they're just going to pull in wherever they have to. Yeah. yeah. And, and that you know, if there was a fire, there's there's a parking okay. lot on Patriot Pizza, and there's a parking lot at McDonald's that they can access to if they if there's going to be that many emergency vehicles there. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Beth to now read all the referrals that have come in since the last meeting and these although she says you may not have all of them stan but they are um but she no, said, i believe i believe i've got i've had them all yeah okay yeah all right so then um beth could you just read them into the record I got them right here. You have all of them, but I have some Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's if you want to. You need to read them out loud. I will. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he did just ask the same question. Uh, you? Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. So, so yes, that's the last one that came in. Carol, yes. has a, Carol has a question for you, Stan. Board of Appeals. Oh, yes. yeah. um, um, on, yeah. on your site plan, the title page, oh, yeah. under the uh, section B where it has layout and material notes, um, it, says yep. drive, it says driveway shall be 12 feet in width for all proposed lots. Um, since this isn't a lot, I thought that is be, this maybe not supposed to be on this plan? plan? That may that, that may be a note that should have been changed and and didn't get changed. Okay. Okay. Already, Robert. And this is from the uh, zoning board of appeals. Their comments were in consideration of public safety. The zoning board of appeals recommends establishing a sidewalk parallel to Route One Nineteen. Connecting existing sections of sidewalk on either side of this property. Um, comment offered on March 22nd at the public meeting. And we see that's been done. Uh, this is from Stormwater Agent. <clears throat> Please provide written proof that projects is exempt from needing stormwater management permit under Chapter 85. Stormwater bylaws. This can be in the form of a notice on the plans indicating square footage of disturbance information on slopes and um, and information on the cut fills. This already has been addressed today. Yeah. This is from the police department. Comments are given the change of use and the significant 
foot traffic from the school to McDonald's to the plaza west of the proposed business is my opinion in the sidewalk. I don't know what that word is, be uh, installed yeah, in front sure. of the property. This will for safer flow in the area. We already discussed that today. Um, and who is this from? Let's see. Hi there. Highway uh, Superintendent. Highway Superintendent. After reviewing the revised plans for 22 Main Street, Route 118, I find that the memorandum dated 2-14-23 by Dills and Roy stated that 22 Main Street not being within elements of mass dot jurisdiction is inaccurate. My initial response to this project has not been met. I've included correspondence myself with Mass Stock Permits Engineer Nicholas Dago for your review. My recommendation is the Planning Board request and receive documentation from Mass Stock stating its finding. And he supports this with uh, correspondence. Um, Uh, to um, Eric at the mass.com mass and another email communication back to him from Mr. Nicholas De uh, Dago and then uh, inclusion of the whole chapter 700 of the requirements by the state um, it appears that Sally's consultant has addressed all these topics, um, but I think that we still uh, are awaiting the approval from, he's applied to the Mass yes, Department of Transportation, and that will be subject to the, uh, what the board votes on tonight. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, it? That's it. We have conservation and board of selectmen and building commission. Uh, the conservation had no issue. Comment, yeah. They just said that uh, the plan should know there's no wetlands on the site. Okay, that must be an old one. What's the date on that? Um, I got to find it. Oh, that's okay. I have one from March 22nd. Oh, that's good. Um, Is that right? Um, yeah. Oh, um, um, man. Who else do we have? We have conservation. We have EPW. We have... I have it here. Okay. Okay. So there, Conservation Commission second referral notice. Yeah. Agents, the field verify, will notify if there is an issue. Uh, field verified on March 29th, 23 that this project is non-jurisdictional for the Conservation Commission. Please add a note to the plan that there are no wetlands on site or within 100 feet of property limits. Did you hear that, Stan? I did. Okay. You want me to read the Board of Selection? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have the Board of Selection? No. Okay. And the date? Okay. Board of Selection second referral notice. The board, the board of selectmen, trusts the planning board with their decision over this application. The board of selectmen would want clarification that this project is not within the limits of Mass DOT jurisdiction. The board of selectmen thanks the planning board for all of their efforts. And the last one is the building commissioner. Yeah, I know that. Okay, building commissioner second referral notice. I don't have any comments about the plans presented. The only concern I see is the amount of work that will need to be completed. I would suggest pressing for a hard date of completion. We need a guarantee that the applicant has the funds to complete this project and will do so in a timely manner. Signed, Eric Chartrand, Building Commission. And that's all. Um, Dan, do you have any information in reference to completion? Um. 
I think that um, we can we we can certainly add a, add a note to the plan, and you can make that a condition that that we or, or we submit something in writing stating there's no wetlands on the site or it's not jurisdictional. And I think same thing with the mass mass DOT permit. I submitted evidence to Beth that that's been submitted, and that's that's a, a permit from a different permit authority. So I I would see that you would just make that a condition that that they obtain that permit. And then uh, Eric's concerns go uh, some kind of a fin be fine. I don't know if the planning board has the authority to look at her bank account and make sure she has the money, but uh, uh, an end date might be might be something because this has lingered for quite a while now. Bond. Project. No. 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 Um, well. What, we what, can, what can we do to assure the uh, concerns of the building inspector? So the board certainly has the authority to uh, provide deadlines for each report. Uh, I've seen some boards uh, opt for a deadline for substantial completion. I've seen other boards opt for a series of deadlines for periodic steps for completion of a project, a, a timeline of sorts that is fixed to the decision. Sometimes they're, they're, the board will ask the applicant to propose something, and then once it's proposed by the applicant, they get a condition of approval and attach to the decision. Um, so it's one thing to impose timelines. That's something that is done routinely. Not necessarily with projects of this size and scope. I see it certainly far more often with larger, larger projects. Um, but I do understand that this project has a history in terms of the, the completion, the work that was or wasn't done. So the work can determine the appropriateness of that sort of a condition. Uh, you know, in terms of determining the financial ability of an applicant to complete a project, that's never within the board purview. Um, uh, you know, with regard to performance bonding. Um, or other form of surety, again, that's something that's often done with larger projects. If it's going to be done for a smaller project like this, you would have to limit that performance on to aspects of the project that could have an impact on the problem. So for example, if they were um, restructuring a point of access and this were a town way and not a mass, mass dot way, and you had concern about, well, listen, you're, you're going to require police detail, you're going to interfere with traffic on the roadway. If you begin work and you don't complete work and you have an open curb cut that could be dangerous to the public, you could bond that work to be sure that if they don't complete it, the town could step in on the town roadway and finish the work. To say on a private property, well, we don't really want to see you start to make improvements and then decide, you know what, we're not going to pursue the project anyway, and then not complete the improvements. Well, that's the developer choice if the developer chooses not to use the site in the manner that it was proposed. So um, so forms of surety in a case like this wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but mm -hmm. I, I, I understand the, the concern of the board when it comes to the, the speed or the, um, the the expeditious manner in which the applicant may, may proceed to complete these improvements. And so if you wanted to impose a deadline, I think that would be reasonable. Can I uh, comment here? Yes, sir. Um, well, in thinking about the sequence of work here, the most critical thing is the approval for Mass Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. So I think we should put a deadline on when that should be here. But can we do that since it's another agency? We and no, but they would not. Neither we would or they would have control over Mass Dot. That, that's a challenge. So I've worked on a lot of projects that implicate mass dot, as you might imagine, because any project that a state roadway implicates mass dot, especially if there's a new curve that proposed. Um, so that's this is often a challenge where an applicant uh, makes applications to the zoning or planning board, but it says I haven't started the mass dot project the process yet, or I started it, but it, so it's routine to include a condition of approval that they obviously obtain any and all other permits and licenses, including the mass dot permit. And of course, if they don't get that permit, then they would need to come back before you to amend the site plan you're approving. Because yeah. the site plan you're approving is going to show a curb cut that is presumably going to be approved by MassDOT. Um, what you could do, to your point, however, though, is if you're going to impose deadlines, you can't really expect that the applicant don't necessarily proceed with site improvements until it's sure that it has the curb cut, at least not with uh, layout improvements to, to the internal uh, driveway or, or parking area. So you could tie whatever sequence of, of, of the completion deadlines you intend to impose, you can tie that to the approval of the MAPS dot permit. 
So right. upon issuance of the mass stock permit, no later than 60 days thereafter, this shall be done. No later than 120 days thereafter, this shall be done. The permit itself, <laughs> after it's issued, they have generally a year to complete the work. And the completion of the work is related to building codes. And so then they get an occupancy, and after they get an occupancy, then they get a business permit. So I'm not concerned about the building permit per se. I think that the, um, but I think there is a concern. Right now, she's working on the building. Um, and I understand without a permit, right? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of construction going on there now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So, uh, there's going on. so that's an issue that um, I think in terms of the public, the town of Townsend, the people of Townsend, the site work is critical. The landscaping can probably be delayed a little longer but to get the parking, the circulation, and the paving, and the retention basin in uh, would be, I would want to see happen probably early in the project. Um, that's my opinion. But So can that, can that be done without the curb cut approval? Can you pave the driveway without... The curb cut. So certainly you can you can make those in front of the curb. But so there's a risk there, right? Well, there is because if the curb yeah. cut isn't approved, and they say, for example, move it thirty feet down. Right. Well, now now, now you, you hope that that sort of dives with what you've already paved on site. Uh, you know, the, the irony here is that maybe irony is the wrong word. What's unusual about this circumstance is that, um, and we I, I advised the board previously months ago that this is not really within your purview. What's been done and the history of yeah. alleged violations. Having said all that. You, you're, you're familiar with it, you're aware, and we yeah. know it exists. And so the reality is, my understanding is that this site is being utilized. It's being, yeah. There's a business operating from the site. And so yeah. that raises concerns, I'm sure, for the board in terms of how quickly this work gets done to bring it into compliance. Also, there's no curb cut, and yet there is a physical curb cut on the ground. There's there's access from the roadway. Yeah, because there's a the driveway was, there. Well, of course, right. And so there's a curb cut permit required, and yet there's already a physical curb cut that's being utilized on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So when we talk about that we have to await the curb cut permit, well, obviously not. The site's being used now without a curb cut permit. But for purposes of investing thousands, tens of thousands of yeah. dollars possibly in, in paving and, and site improvements, that's a lot to bite off before you know for certain if Matt Stott's going to approve your curb cut permit in that exact location. So Stan, can I ask you, um, you that, that the application has gone in, can I ask, that, have they acknowledged? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we got an acknowledgement from them that they received it. I forwarded that to Beth. But okay. I, I would say that, so, you know, to get, it's a little bit of a, 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 a moving target, how long it takes to get something from, from Mass DOT. Sometimes it comes relatively quickly, and by quickly, I, I mean, 30 days and sometimes it takes 60 to 90 days to get a permit and i i don't know i don't know why some of that might depend on where it is and, and their concerns but uh, there is an existing driveway here now and knowing what they when you look at the layout of of main street they just did that striping and those turn lanes and it seems very unlikely to me that they would want to access this anywhere other than where it is accessed now. I'm not saying that they would, that they couldn't or wouldn't, but it seems very unlikely, and we felt pretty comfortable using that existing driveway as our as our access. But again, it's up to it's up to Mass DOT whether they whether they agree or not. So, and if they don't if they don't agree, I think Adam's correct. We'd have to come back, and if if that entrance changes significantly, we'd have to come back and modify. Your approval. And designed. It seems like the the permit approval, the governing issue mm -hmm. here, um, 
and then it would be the owner's risk to proceed without that. So that's really our business. But um, it, it's if I could, it's only your business if you're imposing internal debt, and that's how this conversation arose. We talked about deadline, shorter deadlines for completion components of the project. Right. It becomes an issue if you say upon your decision becoming final within 30 days, they have to have X, Y, and Z done. And if X, Y, and Z are on-site improvements, and within that same 30 days, they don't have mass DOT approval, then you're requiring them to proceed well, effectively at risk. That's when it becomes an issue. The other thought I have is... We're not going to do that. No. <laughs> the other thought I have, if we look at the actual site work that's being proposed, um, there are some things that I don't think would be subjected to Mass Department of Transportation, and that would be putting the retaining retainers basin in and getting the septic in. And those two things can be done. Uh, it would have no impact on Mass uh, Department of Transportation. Mm -hmm. So Wait, there's, uh, there's, there's two things that would be under Mass DOT purview would be the sidewalk and the entrance. That's right. Everything, everything else is outside of their jurisdiction. Wow. So, and excluding the driveway and the sidewalk, um, that work could start right away. And, Can you, um, the septic, right, why don't I think, so, is and, that already done? Yeah. It is. What's yeah, that? I thought that was already the been septic done. tank uh, was installed months ago. Last oh, it was. Yeah. And the retainers. Right. The, the infiltration basin. Yeah. No. Not, well, nothing. that probably should be the priority we'd be concerned with mm -hmm. before they start disrupting all the water. Mm -hmm. So, if they, um, Adam, to you, mm -hmm. if they have already installed the septic system again for the Board of Health and not having anything to do with us, um, would we would one of the reasonable deadlines be the uh, filtration system? Yes. I think that's fair because I, I think, so it's not just what MapStock has direct supervision of, it's any aspect of the project that would be somehow connected. So I agree, MapStock's only going to have a say in the issuance of a permit over the curb cut in the sidewalk, yeah. but where the curb cut lies as relates to the internal driveway would affect where the driveway gets placed maybe and how it gets paved, right? Right. Not significantly, but it's going to it's going to result in an alteration to the interior of the site. So that's why I talked to you to potentially require the applicant to complete the internal pavement before the curb cut is known for certain. But any aspect of the development that is, is not related to that driveway layout, and you could even arguably require them to uh, rough in the driveway or put a, you know, a, a base coat down, just a binder coat down. Yeah, right. the bind so you could go that far, I suppose, um, probably with some reasonable certainty that that's not going to change so significantly that they would be, okay. you know, investing money that they would be at risk. Uh, but certainly the drainage, I think, it could be completed right. right away. Okay, so that, that would be within our purview to get than what we feel to be the necessary things done, but have nothing to do with the sidewalk or the curb cut. And um, I like your idea about the base coat anyway. It seems prudent that they would, it wouldn't be much if, if the driveway changed a bit, it wouldn't be much to take care of that base coat, you know, yeah. to move that or something like that. Uh, the intent is not to make this cost the applicant more money. The intent is to be reasonable and get it done, you know, so <laughs> already. And, and what I always recommend in these cases, because it provides, it strengthens your decision, it, it improves the relationship between the board and the applicant, is that you ask the applicant what it proposes for reasonable deadline. They, they've got a time frame. I'm sure that they want to undertake this work once they obtain the permit. So you ask the applicant to propose a timeline. You're, you're not bound by that. You can say, no, that's too long. But having the applicant propose it on the record okay. and then adopting it, Lend some strength to whatever requirement you then impose if the applicant itself okay. suggested. I do like that idea. Is it unreasonable to um, ask for that uh, plan, Stan, um, or proposal of the work to be done 
to be given to us by the 10th, which is our next meeting, so that we can sure. continue. And then that could be that could be made that could be written in as part of the as part of your decision. Um, it seemed to be a reasonable approach to do everything but the finished grading, so that there's gravel there for the driveways for the parking area, and so the finished grading. Um, in a relatively quick timeline, preferably before the fall. Um, and then we'd have the retention basin. The re there would be a minimal investment in the driveway, rough paving, no paving at all yet. Um, they can do that at a later date. And so the landscaping can be done at a later date. But I think the basic you know, um, locating the driveways, putting the gravel below it, uh, awaiting for the finished pavement, that can be delayed, but, um, and then getting the retainage uh, basin in would be my, what I think would be a reasonable, fair arrangement there. Um, and at least we'll have a jump start, and the owner will have a jump start on. On that amount of work, so. Do you have any questions? Any comments on that? With um, Rod's head, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I agree with what you yeah. said. If we get get the um, right. base and done. So I don't think it has to be a specific date, but maybe by mid September or something, all that rough grading and the drainage should be completed. And I will say, based upon Mr. Dillis's uh, comments alone, he's suggesting that, and I don't want to call it a worst case because I've actually seen worse cases, but he's saying a worst case would be the mass dot approval takes 60 to 90 days as opposed to only 30. Right. Even if it takes 90, even if it takes 120 days, it's only April. So if your deadline is going to be September, mm -hmm. May, June, July, August, September, by a month, they, they should have their mass dot right. approval well in advance. The point is, we didn't want to tell. We have to in here right. to put all this finished landscaping and paving in when it's possible. Um, we didn't want to compel them financially by a deadline. And uh, so as long as it's a serviceable driveway in terms of gravel and that we control the, the drainage there, uh, I think we'll be happy until the project's completed and then the landscaping and the other stuff can all come into play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can, if there's no other questions or comments of Stan, yes. we can move to close the public hearing. I would, I would entertain, um, I don't know if the board recalls, but um, the applicant did request a waiver um, and maybe oh, Stan could talk to that. Would you like to ask the board the waiver about the waiver? Stan? Um. The waiver of... Remind me what <laughs> remind me what that waiver is? Yeah, you had asked for a waiver from one forty five thirty three C five regarding the parking in the front of the building. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. We have um the 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 access to the building is through the front and we have our uh handicap parking space in the front of the building because that's that's where we can build a ramp to access the, the door. That's the only that's the only parking we have in the front is that one HP spot. Everything else is in the rear. We have to do that. We have to do that because of the handicap. So is the requirement for two, oh, we two don't. spaces or one? One. No, there's just there's no viable access at the rear of the building. So with, to put our handicap space in the rear of the building, you're going to have somebody that's in a wheelchair or disabled having to go quite a distance to get into the building. Yeah, that's where you need the waiver, right? That just to have that space in the front. Oh, okay. So you don't need the waiver. No, we need a waiver because we have a parking space in the front of the building. Oh, I got it. So that makes the eighth spot. Right. That's the that's the HP spot. That is the number eight spot. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, so if we, if we want to in front of the building because that's where gonna they're gonna put a ramp to the door. Right. Or a right. right. And there's no there's not really any any ac any access to the building in the rear that's viable. Mm. You say I can read the section code if you want. Basically, the building. Well, he doesn't have anywhere else to park anybody. We handle that close to the entrance, so the handicap access has to be close to the entrance, and that's what he's got. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that reasonable accommodation come within that? Do I, have, I think it is, unless we see there's a hazard there at all. So. The, the question becomes, what's the source of the waiver authority for the board? So um, planning boards aren't often vested. The, the whole concept of a waiver isn't the concept that exists under a zoning bylaw. Waivers are something you deal with as a planning board in the context of subdivision approval. Because the state subdivision control law talks about how yeah. planning boards can grant waivers from subdivision rules and regulations. There's a public interest test. Sure. In zoning, there's typically no such thing as a waiver unless your bylaw creates a waiver process. Typically, if somebody wants a provision of the bylaw waived, they have to get a variance from the ZBA. Variances are different than waivers. Variances are statutory, and they're issued by a ZBA, never by a planning board. Mm -hmm. So the only time when you can issue a waiver is if your bylaw contemplates it. So the bylaw does contemplate a waiver for parking. But let me tell you what it says, because Beth and I discussed this a bit earlier today. Mm -hmm. So section 145-33, which is the parking requirement section of your bylaw, your zoning bylaw, Subsection C, subsection five, is entitled setbacks, parking mm -hmm. setbacks. Mm -hmm. And it says no part of any private parking area having five or more spaces shall be located within a required front yard as defined in Article 2 definition, the Article 7 land space requirements. Nor shall any private parking area be located within five feet of any property line, except where the lot has frontage on more than one street thus establishing more than one front yard, the planning board may, as part of the site plan review process, designate one front yard as the primary front yard, and then reduce the front yard setback requirements for parking on the non-primary front yard. So it's a corner lot. You can pick you can pick which road is going to be the front yard. And with respect to the other road on which it fronts, you can say we're going to call that the non-primary front yard, and we're going to allow for parking to be located in that area. That's a set, that's all it says. What's the setback requirement for the front yard? Fifty feet. Fifty feet. That, that's for the house. That's for the structure. That's what we're talking about. The structure setback. They don't want any parking being located within the setback for the structure. Nothing in the front yard. Okay. But that has to come from the zoning board, correct? Well, if it, so so the point that I was making in the discussion I had with Beth earlier is that yes, unless you have the authority to grant a waiver, it would need to come from the zone board in the form of a variance from the parking requirements. So we don't do that. You you typically would, would not do that, that's correct. So you'd have to go to the zoning board with that, Stan. Okay. For the waiver. And, I, but just, um, I guess there's no off the record. <laughs> um, so, can can the town have a bylaw that um, violates, let's say, the um, a the you know Act for Disability? American Disabilities Act. Yeah. yeah. Well, are you suggesting that this violates the ADA? Well, yeah, if it's for a handicapped person with a wheelchair. Yeah, the ADA requires a certain, and as does the as a standard, our right, body can process. be from an entrance. So we have a conflict of codes here, right? You have a zoning bylaw versus an ADA or uh, Massachusetts accessibility requirement. Yeah. And so the Massachusetts accessibility requirement uh, kind of mandates that the handicapped parking be close to the primary entrance of the building as possible. And they have distances of travel that can exceed a certain amount without a rest plane and 
So those are architectural code standards that have to be complied with. Um, and I don't have enough information to say if it meets it or not. It's just like the ramp there. There's architectural standards for that. Um, so as far as the planning board goes, um, I think the issue is one, we don't have the authority to get grant a waiver as we see it, that it has to be referred to the zoning board. We can make a recommendation based on the conflict of regulations here. And, um, and you know, as far as I'm concerned, um, if we're trying to accommodate handicapped people, um, this is the, probably the most practical way to do it. Um, however, my experience with the Architectural Access Board has been varied. Sometimes there's absolutely no relief at all for anything. And other times they seem to be very generous with their determination. So I can't give me an opinion on that. But um, so I think even though we, we're talking about planning and zoning right now, I think um, there could be other issues coming from the building code on that. So, because there's no architectural plans have been prepared that I know of. So, so I think you okay, could go ahead. you could make you could make a condition that we that we get a variance from the ZBA for that one parking space that's in the front of the building. That's yeah, but we don't. I think that yeah, that's we can make a one thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but also the building inspector would be involved in that decision as well. Not on our end, but to telling the applicant um, what they can do and what they can't do there by the building code, right? Right, that, that, that parking space and the ramp that we propose meet the ADA requirements. The only issue that I think we're discussing right now is that that parking space is within the front setback and that and that that will require a variance from the ZBA to allow that. Okay, let me, let me make simple. a clarification here. ADA is a federal law. It's really a civil rights law. They have guidelines, but they're not mandated. So they give you conceptual approaches to handling things. The federal law, ADA law, says that you have to provide an accommodation. The um, Massachusetts Ar Architectural Access Board has all the standards for ramp sideway design, how far the distances from entrances, um, and all the other government things on the interior of the building as well as the exterior of the building and ramps. So there are published standards for that and there are part of the Massachusetts Access Board, which is part of the Massachusetts Building Code. So, um, and my involvement with this in the past is A, this uh, lot that's shown here was being presented to you having the van location where it is is totally in the intent of the access board requirement the other question uh these paved sidewalks are not handicapped sidewalks they're pedestrian sidewalks so that wouldn't be an issue so when i look at this uh, conceptual plan here, it would seem that it would comply with the building code uh, requirements, and that's Massachusetts Access Board. So we're right back where we were. Um, this is a zoning board review, uh, a request for relief um, based on the, I guess, the hardship of law. Um, you know, the physical circumstances 
Um, and I think we might make a recommendation that they give them some relief on this. Um, other than that, I think that's about the best we can do. I wish I had caught that in the mandatory referral <laughs> comments of the CBA. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Does that help? Yeah. So, okay. So, in when we make our decision, we will. Part of that will be to refer to the ZBA. Yep. Reference to the ZBA. Yeah. Reference. Yeah. Yeah. Get that moving forward as the admin. The vote. Okay. Is there anything else? I think that's about I think the one thing I have is the waiver. So if that's taken care of. I think there's anything else. To just be clear in what you know, what you want to ask for in terms of okay. letting the applicant know. Okay, so um we have close the public hearing now and discuss. The decision after or do we keep the public hearing open for the decision i think if you're going to ask for a schedule a construction schedule and a timeline i would recommend keeping the public hearing open but okay. the board Fine. more submissions coming in okay okay all right so then in discussing this i'm beth i'm going to ask your guidance um for the verbiage on the fact finding in okay. going through this whole thing that we have to do, right? Because this is part of the decision. Yep. And it's going well, that's the findings of fact. And part of that is on the application and on the submittals that have been made. So And you um, normally do that, right? I can do that. Yeah, there are a few things that the board has to vote on, and that would be you don't have to do it tonight, but it would help if I had that information for the decision. So I would go through the special permit criteria, and I think under 14565, you can see some questions there about adequacy of the site. I can pull up the code. I have it. 14565? Yeah, 14565. I mean, Capability and then special permit granting authority that does the application, the action, those are all already in the uh, in the application. <clears throat> well, actually, um, I'm trying to think we should go through 145.42 first. And I can put the code on the screen if you want. If that would be helpful. Would that be say you're going to be drafting this? Yeah. <laughs> and I can do a lot of it, but um, I'm just trying to think about significance for the board. So if we're going to do some of this discussion now and make the part of the decisions now, um, are we going to continue to the 10th? Because part of this is going to have, at, we're going to ask for a timeline yeah. by the 10th. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, I would think work through whatever you want to work through tonight in terms of finding and making decisions on, let's say, access and circulation and the special, you know, the criteria okay. and the bylaw. Well, I don't want to put up the first one, um, which would be 145.42 site plan review. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can do most of the stuff on drawing requirements right. in that um, administratively, but it's probably good for the board to work through um, 145.42e. Access and circulation? Yeah. So just so you can take a look at the site plan and we can go ahead and screen share this again. Well, okay. we've certainly discussed it. Mm -hmm. 145 what? E. It's access and circulation. It's at the bottom of 21. Right there. 21 is at the top corner. All right. Mine's the number down the line. Let's see what you got. So it shouldn't be E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
You can go right down from each one of those points. Okay, so starting with one, and and we answer each one, right? Um, yeah. So section E is about access and circulation. Um, you have the site plan. Yes, we do. Oh, and you have your. So let's just go through and just read each section and comment on it. And all. Okay. Oh, wait. Access and circulation provisions mm -hmm. shall be made for vehicular and pedestrian access to the project site and circulation upon the site in such a manner as to safeguard against hazards to traffic, pedestrians in the street and upon the site. Um, on the site to avoid, oh, I don't know what that is. Something appeared on the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, circulation in the street upon the site, access and circulation <coughs> will also conform to the following. One, where reasonable alternate access is available, the vehicular access to the site shall be arranged to avoid traffic use of local residential streets situated in or bordered by residential districts. This, no this particular practice, this would be no. Yeah. Okay. This is not a or not applicable. Okay. Okay. Two, where a site has frontage on two or more streets, this does not apply. Okay. Right? So NA. So two NA. Three. Where necessary to safeguard, and anybody jump in if you think something different. I'm just okay. Where necessary to safeguard against any hazards to traffic and pedestrians, and or to avoid traffic congestion, provision shall be made for turning lanes, traffic directional islands, driveways, and traffic controls within the street. Um, is that going to be pending the DOT? Yes. Well, I don't, I don't know if this is appropriate. Um, ideally, to the left of the property or to the, facing the property on the right side is the plaza. It would have been far less a complicated issue if the applicant investigated getting a right of way into their driveways and, and access points. And the same thing is true on the McDonald's side. Um, so I, I don't know if that's been explored or not, but um, it takes a magnitude of concern away from a lot of this, this stuff. Um, but I think... Let's... I think Dr. Thurber did talk to the uh, Patriot Pete pizza people and they they weren't interested and I don't think McDonald's has parking that angles in right up to the property line so there's really no way they could come in off of McDonald's okay no. I, I didn't okay. know that anybody explored that at all that's all right thank you you're welcome thanks Dan um now this is I don't know why but it's reduced oh let me try to do <clears throat> And it's really small, even with my glasses. Uh, I'll read the access driveway. Number four, access driveway shall be a de of a design and have sufficient capacity to avoid queuing of entering vehicles on any street. And that could Is be that covered in yeah. DOT, right? Yeah. Mass DOT permit. I don't think that's a mass DOT issue. No, no. That involves the access driveway is being designed to mean to have sufficient capacity to avoid picking your vehicle to back up onto the road. So that's a that has to do with the private site that's oh. and I think in this case where it's one large yeah. driveway that goes around a fairly limited system at McDonald's of the drive through. I, I think there has to be an awful lot of cars visiting that site all at once to back up around that whole building and out of the road. Right. <laughs> so would well, it be reasonable to say the design is sufficient to avoid any? That's all you need. Yeah. Okay. okay. Design Thank is you. sufficient. My, my, it's just one, 
My only anxiety about this driveway is they're so close together that it'd be very simple, easy for somebody to enter the wrong driveway, which means that they have to come back out into the highway to go around this thing. But it's not a new driveway. That was a residential driveway. This is going to be a commercial driveway. Um, so, but even if they would, but, I mean, to me, that's that's. I keep driving around and come up. No, no, the that's side. around the building, Carol. Yeah. Coming off one. Nine twenty. Traffic going east and traffic going west. The driveways are very close together. So you have entry and exit signs. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of activity going on. It would be, it's very conceivable that somebody would enter the wrong driveway and then have to be, have to turn around, re-enter the highway to go into the other driveway because it's so close together. That's the only thing in this plan that I have a real difficult time envisioning, you know? Um, and I think it's a, a problem. It could happen and probably may. You know? Huh? Okay. Yeah, but not, so, not there. You right. can, there's, there's a ton yeah. of places on Main Street that you can get into the wrong driveway. Yeah. Okay. A ton of them. I know, and it's not good. <laughs> I have physically done that, got into the wrong driveway. So, um, and I understand the limitation on the site pretty much restricts everything here. Um, and, you know, um, and I don't want to be the one throwing a wrench in the project, but that is a legitimate concern. And, um, and I know, um, um, Sally's consultants here have considered everything possible they can do, and this is the best they can come up with. Um, so I don't know. Do we have to get involved with how that sign to eliminate um, or try to reduce that risk or not? And again, I don't want to drag this project out to a whole bunch of topics, but... Um, Okay. I am. <laughs> okay, Stan, do you have any suggestion for, um, I don't know, an arrow into there? What, what, what might be a solution to make sure that people go in the right driveway? To this property. I think he's on mute. He is on mute. You're on mute. Hear sorry, anything. sorry, okay. sorry. There will be a sign for the veterinary clinic at near the, at, up at the driveway, and other than that, I don't know what else you can do. I guess I can. People just have to know where they're going. I mean, I, it's it's understandable that someone could go in the wrong driveway. I believe that the driveway closest to it on Patriot Pizza, I think that's the exit. So people, you know, if someone goes in there, they're going in the wrong. They're they're going in the wrong driveway. So. Other than signage, I, I don't really know what else you can do. Stan, that Patriot Pizza one is an enter, uh, entrance and exit. It's, uh, it is? They okay. have one. Oh, all yeah. right. All right. So, you know, to, to Robert's point, if someone went in that wrong driveway, they'd have to go in and turn around and come back out, just like you would anywhere that you went in in, in, a, in the wrong entrance. I mean, the there's driveways all up and down that little stretch of 119, so... This is this is going to be another one, but it does already exist. And the people that are Dr. Thurber's customers now are using that driveway, and and the, and they know that it's there. So I, other than a sign, other than signage, I don't really see that there's much else that you could do. I'd like everybody to look at the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're exiting the pizza parlor, the pizza place. And somebody also is acting the veterinary clinic. And in front of you, there's two high, highway, you have the highway traffic. So this is not so dissimilar to where we are 
now where the Hannaford market is, where there's a lot going on in one spot. Yep. You have to pay attention. Right. And in half a second or five seconds, somebody's making a turn and you just looked over there and there was no car. Yeah. yeah. And that, to me, is that's not... That's life everywhere, though. But that's not everywhere. Well, why are sorry, we sorry. It or sending it? So oh the, the big difference, yeah, the big difference I see, and I'm just, just trying to step on and throw my opinion out here on this one. The high school is very, in the Hanford's parking lot, in my opinion, is very, very different because they change the traffic pattern there. You have a blinking light of people making left, and you got that, and you got people that are just very impatient over there. The area that they're looking to, to put this on is a driveway, and it was actually, believe it or not, pretty heavily used driveway prior to um this being moved into a veterinary clinic because i actually knew the person that lived there um it was a pretty heavily used driveway on top of it it's no different than patriot pizza and the dunkin donuts parking lot it's no different than gourmet donuts in the center of town and the exit and entrance for central plaza which people still go in the exit there all the time so i i, I don't really see a I big issue with the vicinity these two driveways are probably 20 feet apart okay no, Gourmet Donuts not that far. That that driveway is not that far away either. And then you got the look at Cumberland Farms. Look at Mr. Mike's. Look at McNabb's. Look at all of those. I mean, and we're man, there's a bunch of precedents in town. Personally, that's what I'm I'm saying. I think we're we're really beating a uh, you know a dead horse right now, just circling around with this. Um, if the driveway were in the center of the lot, I think it would be more palatable. Uh, but um, but uh, this is Robert, no no offense. I think you'd have an issue with it being too close to McDonald's at that point because it's literally no matter where that driveway is on that lot, it would either be closer to McDonald's or closer to Patriot Pizza. I don't think it would be a big. I, I personally am looking at it this way: is they're creating a solution for uh, another business in town that's trying to do business and they're trying to get around this. If that if, if that was in the center, you'd be saying that it was too close to McDonald's at that point. I, I that's just my opinion based off of what you've been saying through this whole meeting, this whole public hearing. I think we've gotten all the referrals in on this. That Stan has done the design with reference to the referrals, and it seems that the driveway issue is really the curb cut issue so that would be dot whatever okay mass dot um and i i don't think that's going to be in our purview because i think when mass dot comes back whether they approve or disapprove they're going to be the ultimate decision of what is safety for 119. so i mean am i wrong in saying that's kind of it in a nutshell that's where we'll be. No, I mean you're you're correct. Regardless of what this board's its preference is going to be, Mass DOT has the final say at the yeah. located. Now, having said that, and it may be a bit late in the process, but if we I realize this updated plan, you think we're only seeing it tonight. Maybe. If the board had a preference for let's say locating that entrance, that curb cut more centrally within the frontage, then you could express that preference. You could ask the applicant to make that application to Mass DOT and see what Mass thought said about it. I'm not an engineer, however, and so as I look at the plan, just thinking, you know, what was said at the beginning of the public hearing session tonight was that there's a concern, for example, with a, a, a track truck accessing the dumpster at the rear of the site. It has to come in or exit the same way it came in because if it were to continue around the site, it can't make that curvature that and, and then turn back to exit. Well, if you now centrally locate that entrance, that curb cut in the middle of the site, is that vehicle going to have the same trouble entering because now you've got that curvature on both sides of the site. So again, this is more Stan's expertise than it is mine, mm -hmm. but um, I, I'm just suggesting that if you start tinkering with the location that's being proposed while MassDOT and, 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 and uh, its proximity to adjacent properties is one consideration, how it affects the overall layout of the site um, is another, another consideration that, you know, well, to be put to Robert's point that he that he made this evening has been brought up before because we talked about the, uh, probably in maybe the first 
hearing. You, yeah. you brought that up. So I'm thinking at this point, with Stan having all that information, there was just still this ended up being the better spot. Okay. And we're not going to be the final say on this. I think Mass Dot will be. Right. I agree. You know, so we are on the record with your concerns okay. throughout the whole hearing. Okay. Okay. And, and you can condition signage. I'm sorry. You can condition signage. Signage. So proper signage is certainly within your purview. If you want to be sure that there is signage located in close proximity to that curb cut to provide drivers mm -hmm. with some understanding as to where the turn is Patriot pizza, pizza versus this site versus McDonald's. You, you're, you're permitted okay. to do that. So condition would be an entrance sign. Okay. Um, we show a sign on sheet 2.0 and just if I may I just say something that yeah. Adam's correct. We we did look at all those options of moving that entrance and, and the circulation on the site because it the building is there and it's right in the middle. You have to go on one side or the other and to get any kind of circulation around the building. And we felt that using the existing opening was a better solution than coming in on the other side. And six, one half dozen of the other, you're already, there's already a driveway there that is next to Patriot pizza that people are aware of. It seemed like a better solution to keep that driveway than to move it over to the other side and have it be in close proximity to McDonald's, which probably sees a lot more traffic than Patriot Pizza. I have a sign, uh, sign detail on the screen as well, and the location of the sign. Yeah, the, yeah, the sign oh, is on. If there was a design, it says sign. sign <laughs> it just says sign. She, yeah, she's and Dr. Yeah. Thurber is going to have to get a sign permit for the sign, but. Yeah, I was just going to say that too. That's going to have, but that's not in our purview. <laughs> the building inspector yeah, will right. probably do hey, that. Right. Somebody can move. Okay. Okay. Can we move on to the next one, please? That was number. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Um, no, I have the. I, okay. Um, is that better for your reading? I, yeah, I can go. No, I'm on it. Um, so that was number four. We're just at four. We're now starting number five. Five. Okay. Driveways into the site shall have proper grade and alignment as well as transition grades and site distances for safe, convenient, and effective access and shall meet the street right of way and travel way of the street in such a manner as to conform to the standard cross section for the street as determined by the highway department and the planning board's rules and regulations. Um, that's for subdivision control. So that's, that doesn't apply. That's just a word I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> So we did do number five. Yeah, we, we did. Yeah. And okay. and basically it's still under mass dot, right? Yep, that's what I have in your note. Okay, six. Where uh, topographic and other conditions are reasonably usable, provisions shall be made for the circulation driveway connection to adjoining sites of similar existing or potential use when such driveway connection will facilitate fire protection services and or when such driveway will enable the public to travel between two existing or potential uses open to the public generally without need to travel upon a street. That's not applicable. Right? I don't see how that's right. The, the engineer did say that that was explored. Right. That's all we can say. Yeah. I mean, and that is that the what engineer? that's implying something like I suggested, can you know, getting a right away to go to the pizza and use their driveway. Okay, that wasn't going to happen. That's what. Yeah. Number six. Yeah. There is about. Okay, so um, how do you want to put that on me? Well, um, Mr. Dallas did <clears throat> state for the record that. Okay, they, we put that on there. They yeah. explored that. They explored, they explored that, that. Yeah, adjacent right. businesses. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seven. 
There shall be no more than one driveway connection from any project site to any street, except that the, this doesn't have that. It has only one. Is that doesn't apply here? It does not apply. Great. Okay. Uh, next. Yeah. The last sentence of seven does go on to say driveway shall not exceed 24 feet in width. So that, that is a Thank separate you. requirement. I'm and sorry, what was that? Shall not exceed. And it doesn't. And that was something. Do we I write that it doesn't? Correct. Okay. Should not exceed what? 24 feet. In the driveway width, width shall not exceed 24 feet. Right. It does not, so Beth will write it does not exceed 24 it's feet. Right. Compliant, yeah. For, or compliant. Okay. F. Existing streets where the project site has frontage on an existing street, proper provision shall be made for grading and improvement of shoulders and sidewalk areas within the right of way of the street. For stuck there, provision of curbs and sidewalks. So um we have the sidewalks. You have the sidewalks is on the plan. Mm -hmm. G. This section, subsection A to G is supplementary of other provisions of the zoning bylaw affecting access, circulation, design, and landscaping of parking areas, where the application of subsections A through G imposes a greater restriction than imposed by other provisions of the zoning bylaw, the application of the subsections A through G shall control. D and H are required by D and H are not requirements that, that may make findings by the board. These are just continuing on with this very lengthy section of your bylaw. Okay, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, H was a finding by the building commissioner, wasn't it? I think uh, I could granting authority. H just indicates that the special permit granting authority is required. Okay. okay. And that was good. Okay, so that's so each and those two are not applicable. Right, then, so that, that's also why you started or, with, um, what did you start with, uh, E? Yeah. Right, so you didn't do A, B, C. Oh, D, same or, using. It's all, they're all provisions of the same cycle. Okay, so, okay. They just don't require one. Okay. Okay, we leave procedural to that. Okay, oh, I see that on here now. Um, so now we're at Article 5, driveways and entrances. Do we ever leave drive place and entrances? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. okay. purpose. Um, a purpose in order to provide public safety through the orderly control of traffic moving onto and from a street and to provide adequate drainage of the driveways where where required, new driveways and entrances shall be built according to the uniform standard of design and layout. Um, this is not a new driveway. But um, it's a, it's on the plan. It is yeah. a new driveway. It is. Oh, we'll look. Well, okay. Where it is now is not. So, but oh, the right. curb cut oh. is considered new. No, the driveway is new. It's going to be a lot wider. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Driveway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was I was uh, concentrating on the entrance, the street. So how do you want to say the answer to this one? Well, I think that's the entrance, really. The entrance driveway, not the circular driveway. What are your findings with the design? I guess you were just kind of... Well, the one Didn't way... Didn't just... A? Yeah, purpose. Um, okay, well, it says... Um, providing adequate drainage of the driveways where required... New driveways entrances shall be built according to uniform. That's for okay. The, so the you, site you plan that. does, yeah, yeah. You accept that. Okay. Yeah, the site plan okay. does have that. B procedure prior to any construction of a driveway, the owner shall make a written application for approval to the building inspector acting through the board of selectmen with a copy. To the highway department before approval is granted, the application shall be referred to the highway superintendent if necessary to other boards and or. And we have done that and we have received referrals from all of them. 
we have reached out and received it's, the referrals. Talking, How do you do it? This is talking about a uh, driveway permit from the building inspector. You can ask the engineer if that's been done. Mm -hmm. Did you get a driveway permit, Stan? We don't issue them. No. We, well, we, we won't get. We won't get. We won't apply for a driveway permit until we have a mass highway permit. Okay. So, that would so be engineer to um, applicant yeah. to submit driveway permit application. To yeah. Okay. B design requirements. One entrances shall be located to the best advantage with regards to street alignment, profile, slight distance, sight distance, and safety conditions. So that is on the plan. Mm -hmm. As shown on the yes, plan. The okay, so that's C1. Um, and then it goes to 1A. No driveway edge shall be less than 15 feet from any fire hydrant. Is that the case? That's the engineer. There isn't Steve. one there. There is no hydrant there, so no. so it is not. Um, two, entrance of the driveways to a given track of land shall be located through the frontage or across from across the front lot line or through a designated access strip of said land as provided by the building inspector and the highway department. This section. B of the section for plumbing driveway, almost not plumbing driveway. Um, this is compliant. The the design is compliant. Okay, three. Use of access strip other than those across the front lot line shall require utilization of the access strip frontage as the street address for town public. That's not applicable. Got it. Yeah. Not at all, right? Okay. Four driveway grades and locations shall be constructed and maintained so as to provide safe access for emergency vehicles. Driveways exceeding 500 feet in length, which this is not. How 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 many feet is the driveway, including the circular? The, the circular Stand. driveway, the one-way driveway, is 14 feet wide. No, yeah, but this the is the main length. entrance driveway is I think twenty two or twenty four feet. This is length. Huh? This and is length. Oh, the length of it? Yeah. It's probably about twenty feet. The entire length of the The entire street. length oh. of it. But I don't think Well, it's not the same width at all. Yeah. I don't think the emergency vehicle turnaround is applicable. They've already had that. Stan, are you with me? You're on mute. Sorry. Uh, the, the, the circle is about 200 feet long. Okay, so this, this entire driveway is less than 500 feet. Correct. Correct. Not applicable. Thank you. Okay, five. I think you have to scroll up a little bit. Entrance width measured from, okay, hold on. Measured from the edge of the pavement to point 15 feet into the applicant's property shall be. Um, you said it was 12 feet, right? The driveway is 14 feet wide. 14 feet wide. Okay, so minimum is 12 and maximum is 24. Um, and those, those are those, those would actually be relevant to a driveway not really you know not really like i guess you could call this a driveway but it's more of a parking it's more of a parking layout than a drive than a driveway but we meet that requirement regardless yeah okay okay number six entrances and exits shall be no less than 50 feet from a street corner measured between the nearest edge of the driveway and edge of the pavement at the street corner. Not applicable? <laughs> Wait, that's written. There's no corner. I understand how that's written. We got a guess on that one. 
I don't know why I wrote it that way. Well, there's no corner, so it's not applicable. Okay. Right? Well, that re that's talking about streets. Talking about the corner of the lot. Well, the corner of the street. Street corner. Street corner. Intersecting street. Oh. There's there isn't one. There's, there's none. It's not applicable. Okay. okay. Thank you. Seven entrances off state, state highways, highway. which this is, shall conform to Massachusetts Highway Department standard, and so application has been made. That's right. Or engineer states application has been made. Well, you know that because you received the acknowledgement. Yeah, and there is a file number. There's a mass field. Okay, good. You well, can put that on the decision. Okay. Um, design standards shall provide that no water will drain from the driveway onto the street, and all such driveways shall have a paved apron 15 feet in length and have a width in compliance with subsection C5. So you, the plan shows that there are no drainage issues, right? The storm right. And that, 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 that apron is for a residential driveway that would remain gravel after that. That's that's what that section is relative to. So we, exactly. we meet that requirement. Oh. It complies. Okay, come on. Um, nine, any disturbed area shall be sub stabilized and returned to their former state. That's taken care of in the plan, the erosion control plan. Okay. So you'll write that on there that's on the plan? Okay, you can scroll up a little. I want to do the scrolling, but I can't. So I'm going to do 10 next. Uh, where a portion of the stone wall, there is no stone wall. Uh, okay, that was easy. Uh, 11. Driveway design, layout, and construction shall be approved by the building inspector and the highway in superintendent. Um, how, how do you answer that? Because we already got, they already had input. Uh, well, they've seen everything. And um, so, and it's in the really, there's no other alternative than what's been proposed here. So, I don't think we can say much about that. So. Yeah. And, I, and I think they have deferred to Mass Highway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, it's been reviewed in the yeah. comments. Right. Okay. Number 12 is no. Um, it's no. No. Do you want me to read it, Paul, before you answer? Okay. You so, not yeah. applicable on 12. And um, maintenance of any pipe and skull, so that is not applicable. 13 is not applicable. B is common driveway, so this is all of common driveways is not applicable. Got it. Okay. What's next? Put the scroll down. There's no common driveway. I parking requirements. Can you scroll? Yeah. Yeah. What's I, too far? Uh, well, I think all of that is not at Google. Correct. That's all common driveways. Yeah, yeah so now, now, I'm, driveway. now I'm down yeah. to E. You go right to E. Right? Oh. Don't, that's on us anyway. Yeah, so E is now you. So I'll pull up 145.33, parking provisions applicable to all That's zoning board, right? What zoning Oh. You mean one forty five thirty three? No, those are that's your purview. That's your review. Oh, our section. Yeah. yeah, and I just put it up. That is um, one forty five thirty three provisions applicable to all districts. Performance requirements: off street parking must be provided to service the net increase in parking deemed created by new construction additions or change of use. Buildings, structures, and use in existence, April 29th, 1986, are not subject to these requirements as long as they are enlarged or changed to increase their parking needs. So, Those are their needs is on the plan, but it's, it's on the plan, right? Yeah, he's met the parking requirement. And okay, that, that's all okay. compliant. Okay. Um, the number of spaces, additional parking, that's compliant. 
Um, and then the whole next section, that's all compliant. It's referring to spaces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is yeah. That is. And so then we're at C, parking and design. It's parking area design and location. It's a compliant as much as can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I the only it, it exception still... in parking and C is the handicap variance that we need there. Correct. Um, so VDA filing, yeah, required regarding handicap file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that applies to C one as well. Yeah. Okay. That's C one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think parking area with five or more spaces shall so so be designed and located at number two is complies. Thank you. Three complies. Yep. Thank you. Number Egress. three. Yeah. That means backing in and out of parking spaces. That's compliant. Okay. Uh, Four A. Egress. No, we better read that uh, section because I'm... there shall not be more than two driveway openings, which there are not. Okay. Um, and then the next section is B. no such opening shall exceed 24 feet in width, which it does complies. not. All right. Okay. Setbacks comply. Okay, you got to scroll down now. Setbacks don't comply. That's the variance. That's the variance. Uh, the oh, the variance for the handicap. Yeah. Yeah. So that is that's number... five. So you would have to make the note there. And then the six parking lot. Is that planting? There are fewer than that spaces, but oh, okay. Yeah. So there is a planting plan. Yeah. Yeah. Planting. So that's on right. D, street and sideline planting. The following shall apply to premises in all zones. Well, he's back compliant. He's got it on the plan for the planting. Yeah. Well, it, it just it? indicates various planting. It doesn't, it's not a whole landscape. No. We, have. we don't have to tell him what to plan. Oh, no. Yeah. Did you review it? Yeah, he does have a planting plan. Yeah. No. It's, it's on the schedule. Oh, planning schedule. Yeah, there's a schedule on species. Oh, okay. He's got the sizes in the room. Okay, that's fine. Would there be any, I don't want to bring up more stuff, but any issues with um, sight lines, if these were too tall or freeze or put through the wall. No, really, because it's all open with the side. What are the plantings going to be? They're, they're shown on the plan. There's none that will in, impede any sight distances. There are, it's all shrubs. There's, there's, they're shown, they're shown on the plan as, as symbols yeah. and, and they're called out on the plan. There's, there's nothing. Everything, everything is behind the the line, the right of way line of uh, Mass Highway, and there's like that between between the property line and the edge of pavement is about 15 feet, and there's nothing proposed being planted in there, uh, oh, okay. uh, just yes, the sidewalk. Exactly. So there's nothing that'll there's nothing that's going to impede any any sight lines. So yeah, there's planting, but nothing that's going to impede the site. Okay. Right. We're okay with it. So now you can scroll down more because we're done with D, one, two, and three. And so four, five, six. Again, that's with the trees and the exceptions and maintenance. That was going to be my question. Is there a maintenance plan to make sure that um, they don't grow out to the road? They, 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 they won't. There's no way that that would happen. Wow. So those are all those those out at the street are, are just shrubs.
Do you want to make next plan? Do you want to ask them? Can we just turn all comment on that? Okay. Well, it's on here, and they're going to have plants. So it's can we put something like it's the obligation of the applicant to make sure that maintenance is done we don't, per this? We don't have any enforcement power anyway. Um, we don't. But yeah, maybe. it's all on private property. Right. I don't think it's not applicable. Even in commercial? I mean, it can be mandated on a large commercial project, but... We, we we don't have a bylaw that even requires it that I'm aware of. Okay, then I'm just wondering why is that here? I don't know. Anyway, in law, if it's not anything that we no, can say anything about. No, but I guess it about. means that you can ask for one if you want. I mean, in stormwater, you can. Right. Well, so I think it's more than you can ask for one. Uh -huh. This requires that maintenance occur. Now, it doesn't require a plan, per se, if you're looking for something that's on you know, four corners of a piece of paper, but it requires that all plant materials required by this bylaw shall be maintained in helpful condition. Dead limbs shall be promptly removed and dead plants shall be replaced at the earliest of So we can season. we can add that then. Well you can add it. It's in the bylaw anyway. Whether you, whether you add it or not, it's a requirement. It's a requirement. It's it's must comply. Or requirement must comply. Right. It could add you could potentially add it to the operation and maintenance plan under the stormwater proposal. I mean, that's where it would probably go. Because um, they're going to be maintaining the infiltration basin in perpetuity. Yeah. So you could ask for it to be added to that. Okay. So that's all you're going to put there is that it will be added to the stormwater maintenance? Yeah, to the operation and maintenance manual. Sure. Okay. Just the sentence. Because that will actually be recorded. Okay. So is there more to this? There more? Uh, when when <laughs> do we end? So, <laughs> for protection overlay district. This is an act for protection overlay district. However, I have a percent for that the planning board. Do you want me to read this? I have this in front of me. Yeah. Findings of town of towns in that one. The groundwater underlying this town is the sole source of its existing and future drinking water supply. So well I'm not I'm not sure. So I think this actually is a special permit from the zoning board of appeals. So I see on section F it says Special permit granting authority, the special permit granting authority under this bylaw will be the Board of Appeals. Such special permit shall be granted if the SPPA determines in conjunction, in conjunction with other town agencies as specified in 165, 145-65E, that the intent of this bylaw as well as its specific criteria are met. So I'm thinking that if the building commissioner did not explicitly ask for um, the applicant to apply, then I, I, I don't think I don't it's think something it's we have to be yeah. it, is, it is in the standard, you know, checklist, if you will, mm -hmm. for planning board, but I don't know that. You know, again, yeah. this, is, this is not really our purview, most of it. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the only you can ask the question: be... What toxic or hazardous materials will be stored on site? I think that's a fair question. Yes, and disposal. It's a veterinary hospital. Right. Yeah. So those are fair questions that you could ask right now, and I can just make notes. If, if... So we should ask them now, right? Yeah. You yeah, know, we, we have the engineer here who probably mm -hmm. knows. Stan, anything on the um, chemicals? Um, or hazardous materials that might be used at the veterinary hospital? I really, have, I, I really have no idea, but I would imagine that uh, a, a veterinary hospital, just like a dentist or anything else, is covered by pretty strict laws from the Commonwealth as far as disposal and use of materials. Would so, that come from our health department? In, um, in health, Board of Health regulations, but I'm sure that, I'm sure that the, um, DEP 
has regulations as far as for for all medical facilities, whether they be for animals or humans, as far as disposal of waste goes. Right. Yeah. I think that's more related to our license there. Um, okay. It does say the fire chief is um, oversees the hazardous waste. He's the hazardous waste coordinator. Is also the fire chief. So there would be any. I don't know what substances used in any of the procedures, surgical procedures or x-ray machines. I have no idea. And then the Board of Health would regulate. Most of those regulations are proper storage and proper disposal. At the DEP level? Right. Okay. And so they have bad reports of where the where they dispose of the material, who we pick them up when, what the materials were. Right. So I think that comes out of licensing and health departments. Well, even in the definitions, they don't have anything that mm -hmm. looks like yeah, I think, yeah, except maybe chemical and bacteriological laboratory. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. And, and what is the volume and the disposal? But if you know, if the fire chief has reviewed this as as a waste coordinator, I would have been what it was. It's probably going to be some animal carcasses or something, yeah, like that, right? So, say about how they get rid of. I don't things. know. That's mm -hmm. the must be the licensed veterinarian. Reference that at all? Do so you have no authority. No, okay, thank you. Okay. We have no authority. It's a site plan review to, unless there was some proposal to somehow store on the site, you know, exterior for the building, some sort of hazardous materials and some sort of containment. And that would be somebody other than us, so. Well, it might be you in the context of site plan approval, but they're not proposing. So there could be questions about, you know, what they do with animal carcasses or what they do with, um, various chemicals they may use for funding and curative and building. That's going to be either governed by state law or it's going to be within the Board of Health Party, not yours. Okay. I don't think we have to get involved with any of that. Okay. So then we can move on to the special permit, 14565, where you guys, if you would, just have a finding here. Mm -hmm. I would just go right down to the decision. Um, it would be 14565F. Um, if you want to just read that, I'll um, make I a oh, I, I don't have that in the right here. Print out. Special permits, special permit granting authority, the special permit granting authority. I thought we just read this. I would read that. Uh, yeah. 145.65 F. Oh, that's what I was Because that's where you were going to find some fa uh, findings of that that okay. I will put in your decision. Uh, all right. Special permit granting authority. The special permit granting authority SPGA under this bylaw shall be the board shall be the board of appeals. Where are you reading? You said no. Read, read on. The oh, you need it out of the bylaw. Yeah, read on the screen. Uh, sorry. F out of there. Um, F, F decision. Okay. One, in addition to any specific requirements elsewhere in this bylaw or where no specific restrictions are made applicable to a use allowed by special permit, the SPGA may grant a special permit, but only upon its written determination that the proposed use will not have adverse effects, which overbalance its beneficial effects on either the neighborhood or the town. In view of the particular characteristics of the site, the SPGA may require the applicant to pay the costs of hiring independent experts chosen by the SPGA to review any information required by the board. The determination shall indicate that the proposed use will be in harmony with the general purpose and intent of this bylaw and shall include but not be limited to consideration of each of the following. E, adequacy of the site in terms of size for the proposed uses. 
just give me okay. a, if you would a statement on that. Um, Thinking about the project holistically and your proposal before you under your review. And if you need the size of the site, you could ask the engineer, we could go to the documents, the size of the site and the adequacy. Stan, um, in reference to what I just read, um, what would be your determination of the adequacy of the site in terms of size for the proposed uses? It works. I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's he's doing this too. Yes, it's okay. So I mean I, I I guess it is because um we made it work. They right? can only use so many she can only have so many people there at one time anyway. Well so it's a small endeavor we, comparatively. We we discussed this many times and I think we recognize this is the best concept that can be presented. So, uh, so I guess we call it. It's adequate, maybe marginally, but I'll go with Carol. It's <laughs> adequate. Okay, it's adequate. Uh huh. And B suitability of the site for the purpose proposed use. That's okay. Are you okay? No. Um, we find that to be Mike. If you have anything, just jump in. Um, suitability of the site, it, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, they can have a bed and everything. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a business, it's so hard because it's already being done. It's like after the thing, yeah. okay. Impact on traffic flow and safety. It, well, it has been discussed that. at nauseum. <laughs> You're going to leave that. Not happy. <laughs> a mascot. We'll leave that decision. We'll rely to mascot. on mascot. We can do that. Yeah. Otherwise, our comments aren't good. So we might as well. We're relying on mascot. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say just discuss, you know. We can't, we're not in our jurisdiction or not our authority to determine. Okay. Um, impact on neighborhood visual character, including views and vistas, does not apply. Well, it does apply if you well, think it's, it can think it's, yeah, if there's yeah. a negligible impact or. It's well, like none. A, a, no, it's sitting it's, between McDonald's and Patriot uh, Pizza. Right. <laughs> Oh, right. Well, you could have your know, comment saying you think it might improve or it might be negligible. It, the impact is entirely up to you guys. So it's allowable. I think it's negligible. It's acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, adequacy of method of sewage disposal, source of water, and drainage. It's town water and Board of Health approved a septic system. Perfect. Thank you. Um, adequacy of utilities and other public services. All uh, public services are in the road and at the property. They're available. Yeah. Great. Uh, impact on ground and surface water quality and other environmental natural resource considerations. Well, we had the um, stormwater review, right? It's been addressed. It's been addressed. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So you could say something like negligible to even an improvement. If the stormwater system will be mitigating stormwater runoff from the 100 year storm. Yeah, yeah but we didn't really didn't go to that level. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Negligible work. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That special permit may impose conditions, safeguards, and limitations on time and use. No finding of it. You're done with it. Everything else in this section. Okay, but I, that's not where we would put our schedule in. Well, that, that's just the provision of the bylaws, and you can impose conditions. Which oh, so we've been talking about. Okay, so where do we do that? In the decision, you don't need to do it under any particular provisions of the bylaws. Okay, system. all right. Uh, I noticed there was nothing about lighting. 
Oh, we can go to that. <laughs> There's an app for that. No, I'm sorry. That, oh, there, there is it. <laughs> well, it's first you could ask the engineer what their plan is. That would probably be best. Okay. I think he shows one light. Okay. When, like on the. Right it, okay. There's two lights. There's one at the end of the this row of five parking spaces, and then there's one over at the corner of those two parking spaces by the septic system. In the back. Yeah. All the other lights will be uh, building mounted lights. Right. Um, any LEDs? I don't think we get into that. Okay. The type That's of people don't need to yeah. Well, you can, but. That's all the bylaw usually has limits on how many watts or what kind of equipment mm -hmm. you can use. But, and it's not us. Um, I'm just concerned you've got lighting out there. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. You don't have to make any votes tonight if you don't want to, but I just, the fun is the fact and the conditions would be helpful and all right, though. Well, I think we pretty know, pretty well know. Um, I, I didn't want to make it a nice thing. Um, it's up to you. If, if the hearing is still open, there shouldn't be a motion other than yeah. if it's a public hearing. Yeah. And I believe you do want to keep the hearing open because there's additional information. There are, there's a plan revision that you, yeah. you commented on. Yeah. There's a, a schedule for completion that you're requesting on the applicant. So you can't accept those items once the public hearing is closed. So my thinking is oh. you know, maybe you can continue the hearing to a later date. It can be a week if that's when you're next. Yeah. Meeting. Yeah. And the interim best in draft the decision for your consideration. Yeah. Um, what time on the tenth? Um, Stan, are you available on the tenth? Yes. Um, so right now I don't think there are any hearings about human stuff at the six forty five. Okay. Six forty five on the tenth. You got it. And that's for any other revisions and the action plan of the applicant. Right. Okay. For when she intends to do what, some of which can be done before math die. So that's mm -hmm. what we'll be for. Right. Okay. 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 So, um, do I need a motion to continue? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to continue to April 10th at 6.45 p.m. the public hearing for 22 Main Street. April 10th? April 10th at 6.45 p.m. I'll make a motion to... Okay. And Robert, do you second? I do second. Okay. So that is April 10th at 6.45 p.m. for 22 Main Street. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Stan. You're welcome. See you next week. Yeah, it is next <laughs> week. Three weeks in a row. <laughs> is, the, uh, Lori, is the meeting been adjourned? Lori, do we have to take a roll call vote? Hearing it. Are you doing it? You're right. You didn't. Oh, yeah. Vote. Right. Okay. So. <laughs> Roll call vote. Mike Barrasco, uh, yes. And Michael Barrasco, yes. And Robert Therian, yes. And Laura Schiffer, yes. Okay. We are continued to the next, to the 10th. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, Adam, did you have anything else, please? No, I'm going to speak. Thank you. <laughs> Anything for? Um, <laughs> you can review my draft. Uh -oh. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I don't think so. And I think that we are, um, won't be much longer. Good. It's after 8 30. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I still put it to work. Thank you very much. I'm glad you called. <laughs> yes, yeah, you too, Adam. Thank you. Oh. What is one place thicker than the other? I don't know. Can you both yeah, that's the plane that was Oh, site plan about. and the um, operation oh, and maintenance. Maintenance. That's what I was talking about. See, if you see the operation and maintenance plan, 
Oh, what's um, this? Yeah, and that is actually recorded. So that oh, will be in perpetuity. We can put the, the uh, plant and tree yeah, maintenance. The plant and shrubs. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to be adding that to this. Right. Yeah. So okay. The list of things we got. We got to make a referral for the ZBA on the um, variance. Release on the variance. Mm -hmm. Come up with a schedule. Yeah. Which she. Right. And yeah. then everything's going to be dependent on. Mass dot approval. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. And the maintenance one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Here thank you for writing that down. Yeah. And have him take off that one line. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. Yeah. He's going to correct the plan. Remove. Yeah. He's like, what else? Is such a, that yeah. Make thing. sure he knows that. And then was there something else that he was supposed to change on the plan? Oh, no, because yeah. everything now is subject to mass dot. Yeah, I think no. everything is. He was going to put the note. He was going to put the note on from um, the conservation people. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. a couple of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll be in the recording. Okay, so I have an update you know, for the school. Yeah. Now. Okay. Now, thanks for planning. Uh, you. You just you gave us the follow up last week for the citizen planner training collaborative. Because yeah, I, I know Robert wanted to do that. So what's you, uh, the the update on the conference that we went to? No, but I can give you a verbal one right now. Quick. Yes. <laughs> five minutes. Five, less less than five minutes. minutes. The bottom line is. He said you were great. The bottom yes. line is. He was. It's a lot. There's no exemptions. I pushed to see if there were any exceptions. Oh. Okay. However, doesn't mean it's going to happen. Okay. So the explanation is so I'm up there saying we don't have the utilities mm -hmm. and the services and the burden on the taxpayer and all that other stuff. And um, when I got her on the side, she basically said, we just want the law there for the future. Doesn't mean it has to happen. Yeah, you, they told us this from day right, one. Right. Yeah. You have control, and the control is in zoning board, planning board, okay, and our historic people, everybody in town. So you can control what happens. Um, and so in reality, we should work on that part of the zoning bylaw now. So yes. Yes. we get points for the Instead of doing the whole bylaw or something, yeah. we should work on that component. Okay. <laughs> now, the rest of it is simple economics because that developer, whoever it is, has to provide. Here, well, the other right now, there's an example. Now, I met the plan. This I met the town planner in Harvard, Mass. Okay, so right where the Harvard airline is, Harvard airline, yeah, Air, airlines, yeah, I know where it is. Right, there's a guy in there who's going to put like 300 units. Why is he doing it? Because he's tapping into the Devon's water and sewer. Yeah, water and sewer has a lot to do with the right. development. Okay. We don't have any facilities here. Right. So that in itself is going to be a financial detriment. Right. All right. But we do have to be a little more builder friendly because whatever builder comes in, he's got to deal with septics and wells. Unless there's a piece of property somewhere with town water. Um, there's no economic development here. There's no tax base growth here. All right. We're talking about the metropolitan district thing, the MBG. Yes, right. Uh, there are other. It's everything. The, but there are other types of developers and development programs. Okay, so that, that bylaw that needs to be adopted gives us points at the state. But don't we get some money too just by adopting the bylaw? 
Well, so you something. get more money if you actually do something. But it's not 40 like, R. You're thinking of 40 R, right? Oh, it's right. That's the overlay district. The overlay district. Yeah. That's what you're thinking of. Yeah. 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 The overlay district is there. We can do something with the overlay district. Mm -hmm. The MBTA, okay. Affiliate town. 15 units per acre. Yeah, that's what we're gonna have. Yeah, we can't do that unless you. Okay. So, I mean, that, that's that's Beacon Hill density. You understand? Yeah. Totally kidding. Because MRPC is working on a regional plan for just this for towns that don't have public water and don't have public sewer. It's not just those things. It's public transportation. It's oh yeah, well, we're signed on to buy it. Are we? Oh yeah. Oh good. Right, coming. Where were they last year? <laughs> yeah, we're signed on. Mart accepted Townsend two weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. So that'll be interesting too. Well, okay. You know, and it's more. It's not just for people who are going to work. It's people who want to go for fun to Boston or. Or wherever. Right. I mean, I think at what the circumstances were. And there's going to be a pickup point. They're going to try to do something here behind the town hall. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be very economical. Yeah. Even if it's a regular scheduling, if it's only one day a week or something, somebody gets some use out of it. It's going to start at some point mm -hmm. and there will be a schedule. Okay. So the thing is, we have a variety, there are a variety of affordable housing programs and funding sources. On the state level, we have the MBTA district. Okay. So they're, 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 um, even small towns that don't have any services and cannot physically accommodate. 15 units per acre. They want, they want, it means that we still have to allow. Their thinking is, who knows where we are 30 years from now. Right. You might have sewer and water. So that's why it's compelled. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the reality of it turning into something right now is very remote. So then we have, um, so, um, but you should see how many people were there all upset about this uh, program. And it wasn't just committees like us, it was contract and development. Um, why were they upset about it? Well, they wanted to know exactly what the requirements would be. And um, I would think they would welcome it because it was something that would encourage mm, development. Well, yes. But what? they wanted to know restrictions on them or what they can yeah. sell or. Well, rent. that's about what the price would be, what's affordable. Um, yeah. how are they going to determine this stuff? So they had legitimate questions, and believe me, there were some mega corporations there. These were not little people. These were not little people. Well, when it's a state mandate, you've got other all levels. So, um, so I think as far as are what we can do with this is um, come up with a program to satisfy the compliance with the state. Okay, in terms of where the something. Yeah, right. I was just going to interrupt what? if I may. Did we did get the scope of services what? from uh, MRPC. Have you seen it? No. Okay, so I think it's, it's something we meet right Thursday. now, but we do have a scope of services for technical assistance. Another thing I want to do that. Another thing I wanted to tell you about. Dealing with Dan here, okay? I 
gone through maybe six or seven different plot plans that he's come up with. We had questions about the stuffing that thing. No, no. This isn't appropriate, right? What's that? It is not appropriate to talk about. No. That in that public meeting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I thought the public meeting was over. No, no, we're, we're still yeah. at the end of our agenda here. Oh, call of order. I guess I don't know what you'd say. So, <laughs> well, anyway, point of order, please. Point of order. Following up on that, we can also work on the overlay district. Um, okay. So that was. I heard it was a great uh, conference, and that you made an impact. I did. I heard that. Well, the governor's coming. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> We the are going to be coming here. To Townsend. Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll yeah. will be coming for a planning meeting. <laughs> um, so very exciting. Um, <coughs> joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen on the 18th. Yes. Uh, and that is by Zoom. Yeah. And that is for what purpose again? A road acceptance for Cooperage Way and Harbor Trace Drive. So that's the um, application is, is before the town. A Board of Selectmen accepted it. Um, the staff that requires the planning board to hold a public hearing. Um, and so that's the public hearing? That is a public hearing. And I do need to circulate a referral comment form, which I will be doing probably tomorrow. So it goes around just like you would a site plan review application. This, okay. no, this is a road of uh, Harbor Place and Harbor, you know, off of South Street there. Yeah. You're familiar with it? Where's so, it's oh. yeah. down in the harbor. <clears throat> yes. After Nets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the town is, is uh -huh. going to um, vote on uh, uh, accepting those roads as town roads at the uh, uh, annual town meeting. Okay, so we need a public hearing. And, and we it's need to only vote. Vote. Yeah, yeah, you can. It it's only thing. It, it's during. It will be during the board of selectmen's already scheduled oh, meeting. Okay. So all you have to do is. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just put my But you will have to. You'll be expecting um, a vote to be taken. So, so all yeah. members have to be present. Yeah. yeah. So all members have to be present. I. That's a good question. Well, we're going to need a majority. Yeah, majority at least. I. I would assume three members. Yeah, at least. Um, I'll double check on that, but I'm pretty sure it's three. That's the 18th? Yeah. Tuesday, uh, the 18th of April. Mm -hmm. At seven. At seven. It's a joint meeting. Because mm -hmm. they start at six. Their meeting. Um, so, and then hey, I'm on next, Yes. I'm on a business trip that week, just so you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Okay. So I can try to zoom in, but um, no promises because it's kind of a the late nights, early mornings kind of thing. Oh, it's Thank you. only Zoom. So are you going to be okay to do that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. These three of us. I'll see okay. if I can get Ian for that night, but not sure. Okay. Um, Thank you. So, other than that, I'll entertain a motion to um, adjourn this meeting. Um, now, yeah. I, I the public meeting of the meeting meeting. Yeah, this is this is the adjournment of our regular meeting. And what we had, it it just took too long tonight to go back and do number three. Yeah, anything under number three. Yeah, and um, yeah, and so next week will be our third meeting in a row. But then we will not be meeting again until May eighth. Yeah, exactly. At which time, um. Michael will not be a sitting member. Um, however, we will be able to entertain any volunteer forms that come in from uh, Michael's the 25th of April. So if any forms come in, please let the board know. And we will address um, an appointment, hopefully, on um, the uh, May 8th. Because mm -hmm. we wouldn't be able to recommend appointing until we have a meeting. Yeah, on the May after the election. Right. So May eighth would be the next, the next meeting. Yeah. So nobody's running. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Shepard is running. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Um. And but we'll still have a vacancy. And um, I've tried to talk to Ian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tough, you know, 
and mm-hmm. he doesn't know. He's been very participatory for somebody who is yeah, not in the area. It. I mean, he's, he made out a forum yeah. last week. Really? So, oh yeah, yeah. we got Eden. Eden. Yeah. Oh yeah. Our yeah. 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 So, okay. Right. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn adjourn the meeting at eight fifty five p.m. I make a motion we adjourn the meeting at eight fifty five p.m. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor? Roll call vote. Carol Hoff this year. Robert Therian here. Mike Brosco, yes. And Laura Schiffman, yes. Thank you Thank all you. very much. Thank you, Hartley. You're very welcome. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night.